Hello everybody. This is a video about Railmaster, the Hornby Railmaster. Now I have a DCC controller, a Sigma Track one. But we're waiting for them to get PC control on it. It will um, connect by this USB port here. But they're still working on that. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll see how it is with PC control. So I've got the Railmaster. I wouldn't say it's user friendly to set up at the beginning, but once you've got it set up, it's not so bad. I also paid the £30 for the voice, so this, this is the pro version. It has voice control. I'll show you that. So you have a list of locals down this side here. This is all your locals and you scroll down the you have subsections at the top. As you can see it's on all so all the locals are, are here. This is track plan, my small layout. You can control points and accessories, but my points are controlled by the DC controller. So you need a DCC accessory controller to control points and signals. I like to you look at the control panel there, I like to just flip the buttons really for changing points. But there are people who prefer to do it. And obviously you would just click on the screen to change the points. I've done a program and we'll, uh, it's a record function that you have and it allows you to record whatever you decide you want running and then when you've finished you click it again and it, it, it'll have recorded everything that you've done. So it's quite quite good in that sense. You can actually run your railway off schedules and right. So let's load a pro. Well, actually, see this because I'm on pro. I can put my programs here. Normally, you would load them up there. Um, so if I click that now, the program should start. So you've got the one, class 121 one here. Cab lights have come on. See, I'm not doing anything now. It's all been, now the coach lights are on. And she's off. She should stop at this first station here. Sit. So she's 
she drops off her passengers. And now the class 40 should kick in. She'll go round and then end up back there at that station. Now this class 1C1 should leave that station, where she goes. She'll come right round and end up back at the station. All going well. You see, I'm not doing anything. It's all being run. You can actually see the power down running there. So she should stop here. Where she started. And then she'll shut down. All the lights will go off. And she should end up, class 40 should end up at the same station where she started. She's done a full circuit on the outside. There you go. And then she'll shut down. As you can see, class 121 is now cold. All the lights are off and everything. Class 40 should do the same now. Huh? And that's the end of the programme. As you can see the programme, no programme running now. There is the voice. Voice control. So while it's on, I won't talk, I'll just give out the commands. Because when you talk, it's listening to everything you say. It might mistake something I say for something else, so I'll just give out the commands. So switch it on. Master voice control ready. Class 40. Sound on. Sound off. Sound on. Forward. Speed 12. Speed 12. Horn. Speed. 
B5. Speed zero. Sound off. Right, so as you can see, sometimes you have to repeat a command, um, especially if there's background noise. But in general, it's it's quite good. I'm quite impressed with that. I just use it, I mean it only costs £5 now. Now the laptop does have an internal microphone but they're no good, they're rubbish then. Alright if you're just chatting to someone over the internet using the cam recorder. But for the voice control really you need it. A headset's better, I suppose. Um, and I'll sh show the headset I've got, which is when I plug it in, as, a, as you can see, as a mic, when I plug it in to the laptop, it only recognises it as headphones, so it won't let you use the microphone. PC does. But the laptop doesn't, and uh, some people have said because it only has one port, whereas the PC has two ports headphone and microphone. The laptop only has a single port at the back here. We can't see it, can you? But there's a single port, and uh, it doesn't. It picks it up as an headphone, so you get the, the sound. But you're stuck with the inbuilt microphone on the laptop, because that would be better. So that's why I bought this. Because that won't work. That would have worked perfect. And I mean the headphone itself has the correct um, that's just the extension that has the correct plug as you can see to, to take microphone hand sound but when I plug that into the laptop it only recognises as headphones unless someone knows what you've got to do maybe it's only capable of that because it has this inbuilt microphone maybe it's, it is only just an headphone port Therefore, the mic's never going to work on that. Also on your PC, you have to enable the uh, speech recognition. This is Windows 10. But I, th I think that speech recognition up to, I think it goes up to Windows 7, doesn't it? not sure but 
this is Windows 10 and you just activate it don't cost anything it's all built into the Windows so if you, if you get the pro version activate you it tells you what to do anyway but if you read the guide it comes with it when you download the software you get a guide PDF file so you activate that and then switch that on first then that microphone there switch that on and then you can do your voice control and the voice control will do all the points and signals the functions does everything it's quite good now remember I said it's not the user friendly way to say oh, what you've got to do I have it I, mine's the e-link there it is so you plug that in first and your PC should recognize something's been plugged in but you don't know what it is so it's going to say USB serial port you need to find out what com it's using now com is communication that's how it talks to your PC It's easy to do if you go to your show you just minimize it you don't want that so if you go to device manager device manager you'll get a list here of what's connected you see where it says ports communication you click on that and it comes up with what's connected and as you can see it's connected on COM5 you need to make a note of that whatever yours comes up as it'll come up with a different number depends which USB port you plug it into I tried different ones and they were always, they were always a higher number than that so I stuck with the lowest which was 5 ideal if, if it's even lower but it works okay with that come five when you note that come number down you can then load the software either download it from the internet or if you've got the CD when you load the software it's not going to connect the reason is it it doesn't know what com you're using so it's definitely not going to connect but in the settings of Railmaster settings here
you can put Railmaster on the same com as what showed up with your device manager. Without that it won't communicate. That's the communication channel. Depending on what you've got, I've got the e-link, it'll automatically give you the board rate. If you've got the Elite, it's a lower board rate. That's like the speed thing. So you just click here what you've got, either e-link or elite, and it'll automatically put put the correct board rate in there. And then it will communicate. This should flash every now and then, shows you it's communicating, and then as you can see there, communicates. And you need to also, when you, there's a, you have to also change the So you've done your COM port, you've got the board right, right on the rail master. You go to settings, go to devices, drivers and printers. It'll be here. There it is. If you right click it, go to properties. So hardware. Go to properties, port settings, so as you can see, bits per second, that's the board rate obviously, you have to match that, With it depends if you've got the Elite or the, the E-Link, if you've got the E-Link that's what you need to put in, it, just do whatever it's been done on the Railmaster because that'll do it for you. you. Make sure you put that in and you'll get the same speed of communication. Now it's pretty straightforward after that. Tells you there as well, it's on COM5. You can try different USB ports on your PC, to try and get a lower number. People say free is the best, but it works fine on that. Once all that's done, put your locals in them. You'd have to click that, and then it'll ask you to start putting your locals in. The Hornby ones, let me show you. Uh, puts a photograph in. You don't have to do that if it's a Harmby one. Um, it also sets the speed and everything um, and puts all the functions in. And all the 
functions of the AC. But if, you, if it's not a Harmby one, like this class 121 one here, you got to put your own photograph in. And it won't put the functions in. You, you just do that yourself. So on this 121, lights on and off, cab, cab 1 light on, cab 2 light on. And the interior lights, coach lights, they're the only functions it has. But it's good where lights concerned. There's no, it's not a sound one. But if you had a sound one, and you would have to put all the sounds in. But there is a way of cheating, really, because you can. Whip on the section where you put all your locals in let's say you've got a Batman sound diesel there'll be nothing there because it's not harmful you can actually put all the harmful sounds in and then change what's different from the Batman to the Harmby because there won't be many differences most of them will be the same so let's let's just put the Flying Scotsman in well actually let's put um, let's put that one in There she is, class 40, Empress of Canada, and it puts all this, you, I've not done this, it, it puts it in automatically. So if you was to put a Batman diesel in, you can change this, just click on it and then delete, you put in what you want. So you'd have the correct name, the correct photograph. Like I say, you'd have to take a photograph of it because it won't supply one. And then you'd have all these functions in. Save you putting them and then change what's not right on between the Harmony and the Batman because some might be slightly different, but most of them will be more or less the same. To change it, you just click on it and uh, delete what's there and type in what should be the correct thing for instance on the back and the, some of these horns might be in different places brake squeal might be might not be on F4 it might be F7 and different things like that but at least you're not having to put all these in like I say it's all 28 here up to 28 so that's how you put your locals in and once you once you put your locals in um, they'll all appear here you can choose to have one column which makes your trap plants area slightly bigger but my like I say, mine's a small layout, so I don't need a huge area to put my trap plan in. Um, so I've chose to have two columns. And then you just go down this column and it's all my DCC locos. On the programming, 
because then that's what you click to start your program and then once you click your first button the program will start recording whatever you do and then you just when you've finished just click it again and it'll all have been recorded everything you've done and that'll be your program then so the only thing you've got to do then is when you are run the program make sure the locals are in the same position they were when you first started recording the program and then they should run perfect you do get a lot more things with the pros not just the sound for a start you can put your programs in here you just click on them whereas normally you would load them up here you should list all, all the programs I would advise if you click this question mark here you can only do this on the pro but there's an option to back up now it's not going to back everything up but it will back up all your locos and your track plan so if for some reason this crashes and you're going to have to reinstall it and things like that because if you did reinstall it it's not going to remember your track plan or your locals you're just going to be starting from the beginning but with that backup you can then and it's only a small file I've put it on, onto this SD card it's just a 128 but I mean it's, it's it's less than a megabyte the, the backup because that's all it's going to back up and a few other things it might it all backs up your programs that you've done as well so programs locos and any track plans you've done just backs them all up so then from the bare bones railmaster you can then reload all this information back in and you and it'll, it'll all come back to how it was before it crashed but you can only do that with pro you could do it on the normal railmaster you would have to go into the railmaster file find the file that contains your locals find the file that contains your track plan and copy them that way but with the pro it, it does it all for you and you'd also have to find your programs that you've done I mean I'm having fun with it, I'm retired so plenty of time to mess about with it and uh, doing the programs is, is fun but I tend to like to control my locals anyway um, also if you put your mouse into the speed thing there and you use your mouse wheel it, you can control the speed that way and mouse wheel mouse wheel forward obviously increases speed mouse wheel back decreases it say so the other way of doing it is to obviously click it and 
pull the uh, throttle up like this, which is a harsher way of doing it really. Bit smoother with the mouse wheel. We'll stop it at that station. This is shunt, this is cruise, and that's stop. This is your direction. Reverse, forward, and yeah, that's where you speed up, show you what speed you're doing. And that's your whatever number you give it, DCC number. You can change your CVs. There's a programming output on the e-link. So I This programming track, you always do your programming on the programming track. In fact, I don't think it'll let you do it on the main anyway. This DCC controller will let you do it on the main, but that's what the, this one is for the Signa track. That's the programming track, and that's the programming track for the E Link. It's always best to program them on a program and so I don't have to keep pulling these wires out. I just one of these switches here so I can change between the e-link and signal track. So even if I put this on by mistake and I had the e-link on when that switch is either down, if it's down It'll only accept power from the e-link, so it, it wouldn't matter if I put this on. You know, you're not going to get double power to the track. And if I had it in the signal track um, up, and I had the e-link on, the e-link can't send power to the track. This switch totally isolates that, and they do the same with the DC control because sometimes I run DC on here um, and that's each one switch for each track so I can run DCC on one track and DC on another because both these tracks are completely isolated um, so it's two power feeds so each circuit is totally isolated even though there's a Uh, point here, double point, uh, it's not connected. Whereas on the other points, all them inside points, I've got those connections, so it doesn't matter which way your point is, there's always power going through. But obviously, I've kept them off that one because I want, I want this track and this track. Isolated, so I could run DC on here and DCC on here, or DC on here and DCC on here. Depends how which way I put them switches. But you can never send to like if I have this on, and I always have this on anyway because it does the point motors and it does some of the lights, the 12 volts. But if I have this on and I was to turn these just by accident, it doesn't matter. That power can't get to the track. It's totally isolated. These are 5 amp switches. 
So that it just saves me having to keep pulling wires out. So well, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I've still got loads to learn about it. To do a track plan, you would click that. Design a layout, a blank layout should come there. You have all these things here, you start designing your layout, give it a name and then save it. Also on the Railmaster Pro the points you get extra ones these are all extra these you only get these on the normal and you also get this on the pro And that's what you can put your programs, that's like I say that train I did. You can have your program connected to that. It just saves you having to load it up from here. If you're ever running a program and you want to stop it for whatever reason before the end, just click that. And although it says at the moment run the program, when you're actually running a program it'll say stop the program and that'll stop it. You can double add. It's quite it's quite fun. I've not encountered any problems yet. Except, I mean, won't call it a problem, but on the... I'll do it all one-handed, this. On the... Right. One, two, one. Let's get it... Big mode. So you've got cab light one on and off. I had to work out what the voice would understand. Because there is, a, the, there is one for cab lights. Like on my Batman 37. It said cab lights and both cab lights come on. And there's a lot of that do that. And then that, that's not a problem, the voice understands it. But on this, you see, you have a front cab light and a back cab light, independent. So I put front cab lights on, things like that. It won't, didn't understand. I eventually come across this one, cab one, which is the front, cab one light on. And that switches it on and then cab one light off or switch it off. It's the same with the rear cab light. And the coach lights wouldn't work even though that isn't in the actual function menu. So I thought, well why is that not working? And coach and lights is separated for space. So it's actually one word, coach lights, coach lights on, coach lights off. It understands it then, see? But if that space was still there, it'd come up and say, you know, function not available. So that got that working. They're the only things that, um, I've actually 
done another one, which is the class 52. Right, lights on and off obviously. Lights one is the hauling light. So you would have, when it's hauling, you would just have the main light on. You wouldn't have a rear light. And if it's a hole in the other way, then same thing. If you say hole in or anything like that, I don't understand. So I've just done it as lights one and lights two. They're two hauling lights. And like I say, that now when it and again, each cab lights independently done. So I've got to say cab light one for the front. And cab light two for the rear and that cab light cab one light is all one word if you put space in it it doesn't it just keeps coming up and saying function not available so i just thought well we'll take the space out say it all as one word except for the on so i'll say cab one light on works perfect understands that took me a while to work that out but they're the only issues I've had everything else has been fine so you got that messing about at the beginning getting the port the com port right and getting that so it's all you do is remember you put your e-link on first make a note of the com number load your railmaster go into the settings tell railmaster what you've got either an, an e-link or a leak it will automatically put the correct board rate in but you will have to put the com port in just to let railmaster know what com port to use communication port once you've done that you would not obviously click that but i don't need it it's all so just come out of that then Make, go to the properties of, of that COM port that your e-links connected to make sure the board rate is what railmasters put on depending on what you've got either the e-link or the Armby Elite it says in the guide you can use the Armby Select I don't know how that would work. I think they do a special connection thing for it. So I don't know. I, I have, actually have a select. It was the first one I ever bought this. So there must be a way of doing it. But I think you need a... Because this doesn't have a USB port on it or anything. In fact, the, you can't even change CVs on this or anything, you can't put longer dresses in. So it's like a starter thing. That's why I upgraded to this, because you do everything with that. And once they get the, they're working on the software now. For PC control. Um, that'll be good that. But I might be waiting a while because of this coronavirus thing that's held them all back. Um, yeah, it is good fun, especially that voice. Okay, once I get more into it I'll um, I'll 
obviously do some more because there's plenty more things it'll put all this on as you can see uh, there's the guide the PDF files that guide's quite good it tells you quite a lot Okay, take care everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.